Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Kohelet's research, diligence, and achievements. I said in my mind, Come now, I will examine you with joy and delight. So enjoy yourself. But I discovered that this likewise is vanity. I said concerning laughter, it is crazy. And regarding pleasure, what good is there? In my search for more wisdom, I sought in my mind how to gladden my heart with wine, yet protecting my mind with wisdom, and to practice foolishness until I might discover what was excellent for the offspring of humanity which they should practice beneath the heavens throughout their lives. I had grand achievements. I built private mansions and established private vineyards. I established private gardens and orchards, having all types of fruit trees within. I established private pools to irrigate the entire vegetation. I employed private workers, male and female, and had workers born in my mansion. I had large quantities of cattle, of small and great sizes, more than anyone else who had lived or reigned in Jerusalem before me. I amassed in my private treasure silver and gold, and the rare treasures of monarchs and of the lands over which I reigned. I had private musicians, male and female, and the pleasures of the offspring of humankind. All types of musical instruments, music and entertainment. Certainly I was great, wealthier and more successful than all who had lived or reigned before me in Jerusalem. And my wisdom never let me down. Whatever I saw and desired, I obtained. I did not restrain myself from being happy, for I was happy and rejoiced in all my effort and toil, and this was my reward for all my effort and toil. Then I considered all the achievements that my hands had accomplished, and the toil that I had toiled so hard to accomplish them. And certainly, all was vanity, as infuriating as chasing the empty wind, and there was not a single thing to be gained beneath the sun. So I turned myself to consider wisdom and madness and foolishness. For what can a human do who succeeds the monarch? Only that which previous monarchs have already done. And I observed that wisdom surpasses foolishness, just as light surpasses darkness. The eyes of a sage are in his head, but the stupid proceeds in darkness. Personally, I observed that the same event befalls them all. Then I reasoned in my mind, as events happen to stupid fools, so they will definitely happen to me. Why then have I gained so much wisdom? Then I concluded in my mind that this obviously is vanity. For the sage is not remembered, and the idiot is likewise not remembered, observing that everything which exists at present in the future will altogether be forgotten. And how the sage perishes precisely like the idiot. And so I loathed life because the deeds that are done beneath the sun are disgusting to me. For all is vanity as infuriating as chasing the empty wind. Certainly I loathed all my effort, all my toil, which I had toiled beneath the sun because I was aware that I would 
ultimately surrender it to the person who shall reign when I'm gone. And who can tell whether he will be a sage or an idiot? Yet he shall reign over all my toil, which I have toiled with great care and diligence, and in which I have proven myself learned and sagacious beneath the sun. This likewise is vanity, sheer vanity. And so I proceeded everywhere, hopeless and dejected, regarding all the toil which I toiled beneath the sun. For there is a person who toils and strives with great wisdom, great knowledge and skill, only to surrender all that ultimately to a person who did not toil at all or strive for it. This likewise is vanity. It is a grave affliction. For what profit has a person for all his toil, for the infuriating experiences of his mind, for having toiled so much beneath the sun? All his days are full of aches and pains with tribulation and grief as fruits of hard work. Certainly, even in the night, he cannot steal the mind. This is surely vanity. There is nothing more fulfilling or satisfying for a person than that he should eat the best foods he can and drink the best drinks he can, and that he should find joy in all his endeavors and enjoy his achievements. But I observed that even this was from the hand of Almighty God. For without the Almighty God, who can even eat a thing or enjoy anything whatsoever? For Almighty God bestows upon a person who pleases him wisdom and knowledge and happiness. But to the offender, he gives hard labor, gathering and amassing material things and treasures that he may grant them to the person who pleases Almighty God. This likewise is vanity, as infuriating as chasing the empty wind. <laughs>